Boogie, drop that beat. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Talking Out Loud with Miss Talkative. Everything I say is my own opinion and alleged for pure entertainment. Remember, I'm just talking out loud. I would like to speak on Carlos King. Bravo. Did y'all promise Carlos his job back? Did y'all tell him he was only off the show for a certain amount of time or something? Because, Bravo, y'all have about 10 to 12 housewives installments, including Married to Medicine. And when I say Carlos knows every branch, every installment of the Housewives and Married to Medicine, every episode, every cast member, every scene, on and off the camera, he's heavily invested. And it wouldn't bother me if for him to be that invested except for he's no longer on bravo he is an executive producer on own the oprah winfrey network so i'm not understanding why he is so in tune with the bravo franchise i feel as though that he is with he's taking so much time to review study and examine the bravo franchise that he don't have enough time to focus on his own shows is he rooting for bravo because it seems like he's promoting Bravo more than he's promoting his own shows. He gets some on his podcast, his after night specials, his whatever he has going, his YouTube channels. He stay interviewing these people, stay in these in in the Bravo business. All of it. And like I say, I would not have a problem. Because I know there are plenty of people that are just as heavily invested with the Bravo franchise and any other housewife or um, reality show that's, that's uh, come to surface. But Carlos is an executive producer on... A totally different network but yet he's promoting day and night the Bravo network I just don't understand unless he's being paid to promote these shows to check these cast members to examine every inch of what they're saying what they're doing what they wearing i don't understand because when we get his show love and mayor tunsville i'm asking myself did carlos know this did carlos see this But, and I have to ask, and I have to say, he couldn't have been, he couldn't have been there. He couldn't have seen this. He couldn't have watched this because an executive producer for a reality show couldn't have let this 
slide by. Is that why he has Martell playing double duty, double agent for Real Housewives of Atlanta, Dayton, Cherie, trying to get him a spot over there so they can make their exit from own together to go back to, to go to Bravo. And he's already promised Martell a spot. Because the way he had Love and Mirror Tunsville, um, the scenes just thrown out, the I mean, just had it old so and he said his words, not mine, ratchet for the last couple of seasons. Maybe he said, My time is up over here. I'm going home. I'm going to get so invested and they know what I can do. And maybe Bravo told him, when you show us better, we'll let you back. Because we all know how them doors at Bravo be revolving. You got Cass that they're gone one minute and they resurface the next season. So maybe Carlos is like, well, if it can revolve for the cast, them doors can reopen for me as well. And I'm not mad at them. But if you're going to make an exit, and I'm not saying that you're that you are, and I'm not saying that you're not. I don't know. I'm just saying what it looked like to me. Look like you're trying to root for Bravo because they didn't promise you something and they got you waiting in line. Because when I tell you, you be on it for Bravo, you point the stuff out for everybody to see. You put them all on blast. You giving network secrets. You calling staff, calling cast out for, for lying, for um, fake storylines. I don't get it. Unless... You're trying to promote the Bravo series for your own game. Other than that, I just don't. Because you have your own network that you work on with your own show, your own cast. And you're not going the back that hard for them. I know you don't have as many... Um, as many uh, shows as the Bravo Network. But it could get there. But not the way you're going. Because you let Love and Mary Tunsville slip through your fingers. It started off so awesome. So awesome. But I guess because you're so heavily invested in Bravo. And you want to call bravo out for everything that they do and you want to make sure that they notice that you see them and you want to let them know well i'm carlos king the king of reality tv and i see it all i see what you do when i see what you did here i see this and i see that they know where you are but they not i don't know not out in the open they not checking for Carlos King or any of his series, his franchise. Because Andy has a large enough franchise that keeps him busy. He has spinoff shows for his franchise. He has his what happened, watch what happened live. I don't understand why you're promoting Bravo so heavily unless it's some type of game for you. Now, I watched Carlos his rewind of the um, Housewives of Potomac um, reunion, episode one. And he alluded to cast members 
being let go for lying, having fake storylines. He alluded to cast members living beyond their means to look and live like the Joneses. I said, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold up. Carlos, you mean to tell me you can see this from another franchise on another network, but you can't see it on your in your own backyard? I'm not even going to say your backyard. I'm going to say your front yard because you're the executive producer. The Scots 1.0. You don't think that they trying to live like the Joneses? They don't have, what are they showing us that they are trying to, they're talking out loud by saying nothing. They're talking and talking in circles about their business. But all we see them, the only business we see is at, they, at Black sitting around the bar. And it, yes, it is their business. It is their business. But from the big business that they have or that they claim to have that have brought them in millions of dollars, both of them have said it. Letitia and Marcel have said it. Scope have, they have made that into a multi-million dollar, multi-million dollar business. That, I, that we have yet to see. I don't get it. But you call out. Other cast members. From another franchise. Another network. For doing this. Very same thing that your cast is doing. You alluded to. Someone on. The Real Housewives of Potomac. Speaking too much or speaking out loud about her income, stating that she was getting paid $40,000 a month. In your words of advice were, be quiet. People are watching. They're listening. And you, out of your mouth, stated, as black people, we should not be trying to live beyond our means. And live like the Joneses. Those were your words. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. But then yet you're trying to boost the Scots 1.0. Letitia and Marcel up. As if they are high and mighty. You are letting them throw these... Um. Mountains of rocks and boulders and dirt in our face year after year after year. And you're like just taking it. So if you're and because you're just taking it, you're forcing you're forcing the viewers to take it. And get mad when the viewers say, "Uh, uh-uh, I'm tired of this. When they gonna show us something? You, you was talking about the lady mentioning her income, and she need to be quiet. Martell and Letitia, they do nothing but run their mouth about their income. Marcel said he made seventeen million dollars. By himself. By himself. That's without his wife. He made $17 million. My question is. Did he spend it all in Africa? Did he take the whole $17 million. Over there to Africa. And put it in their banks. Like Tasha K did. Allegedly. So she didn't have to pay Cardi B. Is that what Martel. Marceau, I'm sorry. Marceau did. He, he took the money to Africa. When he went, the people um, paid him a check up front and he took all the money and went to Africa and put it in their banks. So if anything ever went down, him and 
uh, he okay? He can make a, a, a great escape? Because I have not seen, and I don't know about any other viewer, I can only speak for talking out loud, Miss Talkative. I haven't seen 17,000 worth of nothing from the skies, let alone 17 million. If Martel, Marcel stated that he made 17 million by himself, but Letitia stated that she made Scope rise up into a multi-million dollar business, that means that they booming, that they are doing the doggone thing. You alluded in your review of Real Housewives of Potomac that we need to stop renting. Ain't that what Tisha and Marcel are doing? Aren't they renting? Now I know that they have some land that they're trying to build their dream house. But if you give an advice to Real Housewives of Potomac regarding their finances and trying to keep it real and living beyond their means and this, then the third, they could have, why didn't you give the, the same advice to Scott's 1.0? They could have bought a house by now and lived in the house and by the time their dream house because they're paying rent anyway and you pay more in rent than you do for mortgage so if you got to pay for it anyway why they couldn't why didn't they buy a house pay into the house the mortgage rates are going to climb and by the time their dream house is finished being built, maybe they could have gave the house that they were living in to one of their kids. Their son is just turned 16. By the time the house is built, maybe the son will be 18. And they could have passed the house down to him. Or they could have flipped it. Or because they claim they enter real estate. They could have kept it, rented it out, did some, it could have been an investment property, but you are, this is why I call you an honorary, honorary Scott, because you're helping Scott's, the Scott's live their life and beyond their means and to um, lie to the viewers, dis be deceitful to the viewers. They not reality TV. And I don't care who says or who thinks that Marceau is reality royalty. I don't. I don't see it. Because he, you can't get a straight answer out of him. He lies. He's deceitful. And he talks down to his wife. He always giving advice to people about what they should do. He thinks he know more than everybody. But when it comes to him, all he do is talk in circles. You ain't fooling nobody. Only time he can speak is when he's alluding to that 17 million and putting someone else down or putting his wife down. Once again, I haven't seen no 17 million worth of anything from 
Letitia or Marceau. And Marceau said he made $17 million by himself. And Letitia stated that she brought Scott up to be a multi-million dollar company herself. So that means that they're rolling in the dough. Letitia's still riding around in a car with a broke, uh, with a cracked windshield. Not seventeen million. Seventeen million would have cleared that up real quick. They have Kimmy son working at Black, and they don't have staff. Seventeen million dollars. They could have staff like that. Because that means that they have the resources to bring somebody in. And I know just because they have $17 million doesn't mean that they need to put it all in a company. But if it's their company and you're, ha and, and you're taking and you believe in this company and you're trying to take it to the next level and you want the company to stay afloat. You're going to put something back. You have to put something back into the company in order for it to continue to be successful. You're, you talked about on Real Housewives of Potomac how staff was, uh, how the cast um, were let go for lying. That's all the guys do is lie. Scott's 1.0 and 2.0. They have st fake storylines. That's 1.0 and 2.0. At the reunion, when it was said that Maurice stays out till four, uh, till after four o'clock in the morning, I said, oh, come on now. Here we go. Carlos, come on, ask the question. You didn't say, well, where were you? Who you with? What you doing? Aren't you a lawyer? Don't you have to be in court by nine? Ain't that much prepping witnesses in the world to four o'clock in the morning. You don't have a team to help you prep the witnesses for court the next day. You ain't at home writing your briefs for court. I don't get it. Credit one is no longer open. Well, I'm not going to say no longer open. It's not open right now. Allegedly, it's closed down for repairs. But I thought they were a credit repair. And I thought that Marceau was a home builder. So that repair shouldn't have took that long at all. They should have got right on that. Because we haven't heard of any jobs that Marceau and Letitia have been doing lately for Scope. They haven't bragged about anything. So I know if they're doing repairs at Credit One, how long is going to be down for repairs, for remodeling? Giving fake storyline to me. Giving lies, giving deceit. The same thing that you're checking other casts on a whole nother network for. Your cast. Somebody that you employ is doing the same thing to you. Destiny. How many seasons? Have you allowed her to 
Shuck and Jive, a true storyline. That re re reopening of Madani. I don't understand it. And from what I understand, she wasn't even paying the rent in there. I don't know. I'm, it's all alleged. But she didn't give us anything. But what you did allow is her to interfere with Melody and Martell's life. Knowing that they were newly divorced. They had issues that needed to be worked out. Just the two of them. They didn't need any interference. Any interference was going to be overwhelming because they are getting to their new norm to work out things by themselves as co-parents with their kids. Moving on with their new norm. And it's something that they needed to do. They didn't need any outside help from Destiny or anybody else. Martell, Melody, the Eminem kids. That's who needed to work that out. Martell didn't need to know. If he didn't hear it for himself, he did not need to know that um, Melody gave a response after being asked about him, what she thought about him and Mark, uh, him and Sheree dating, in which she said the woman was beautiful. She had no complaints or no ill feelings towards the woman. She kept it so cute and so, uh, I mean, her, her, her rebuttal, her statement, I mean, her answer was, was a great, I mean, it was a great response. But yet Martell flew off the handle the way we knew he would because he want her to care. He want her to, to be upset that he fake moved on and he was more upset that he that she wasn't that she didn't give him the reaction that he wanted and he started calling this woman great and everything like that and I'm not saying that she's not she could be the best person in the world but was she that great where it was time for her to meet them kids no no, absolutely not. But he did it anyway. And then you have Destiny, in her words, not mine. Production told her to do that. You have Destiny to go and play a recording for him. Even after he said he didn't want to hear it. She played it anyway. And then smile. So even if production did tell destiny to do this to play this recording get it to him make him listen to it to get a reaction regarding melody she smiled like she was happy to play this recording so you can't tell me that this was even if production did put the idea in her head she was happy to accept it she was happy to fulfill that duty she said oh Another dig at Melody, I got you. Got you. I'm the person. I'm the person. I'll be the gopher. And she took it and she ran with it. But ask her something about her divorce. Her 
being served with the divorce papers three, three weeks after giving birth. She turned ice cold. She can't talk about it. She turned into a bear and go hibernate. She don't know what you're talking about. That's not what she there for. But you let her get away with it more than one season. She gave us nothing. The viewers complained and you allowed her to stay. Just like you allow Scott's to stay. And I, I mean, is it a De Detroit thing? Because the Scots are from Detroit. Destiny are, uh, is from Detroit. You're from Detroit. Well, let me tell you. I'm from Detroit. Been here all my life. Still here in Detroit. And I don't care for Destiny. Scots 1.0. Scots 2.0. And I feel as though you're an honorary Scott because time and time again, time and time again, you allow them to do whatever they want to do. They don't have to tell their, they don't have to show any reality regarding their lives. All they got to do is sit up in black and focus on everybody else. Talk about everybody else. Laugh at everybody else. And they get away with it. You stated it. That the viewers, you stated that for Real House of Potomac, giving fake storylines and, and living beyond their means, you said your words, and I agree with you, you stated that the viewers want to see a great comeback. Uh, if, if it's a fall from grace and if, if you, and you have to build yourself back up. That's what the viewers want to see. I agree with you wholeheartedly. But you're not allowing your own cast to represent their real, true reality. The only one that I can honestly say that have walked that path is Melody. First episode... She's running a multi-million dollar company, making boss moves with her husband. Next thing you know, she had a fall from grace. A real eye opener that made her have to climb back up. And she's doing the damn thing. And the other cast wonder why she's such a favorite. Well, how about because she did exactly what you're saying the viewers want to see. Your true reality. If it's a fall from grace, it's a fall from grace. If it's you running a multi-million dollar company being a boss... Is you running a multi-million dollar company being a boss? Whatever your reality is, take it, run with it, stand on it, and give the audience, the viewers, your reality. But instead, you let these people slide with made-up stories. They tell so many lies back and forth, they can't keep up. Our eyes, our heads are going back and forth like, wait a minute, didn't Letitia say? Didn't Marceau say? Wait a minute, it, was she a housewife or was she was she a banker? Did she work at the bank? Wait a minute. The Scots say they've been had money. But didn't Marceau work at the movie theater? What? Did he own a movie theater? See, you've allowed your cast to tell so many lies. So the viewers is like, no, we've had enough. And if you can call out the cast on other networks, 
that has nothing to do with your network, then I guarantee you the viewers are going to point them, point the your cast out on the Oprah Winfrey Network show. Because for one, if you see it over there, you see it on the own network. These people are up close and personal with you. You say you talk to them and and um you love this cast. They're your problem child. You know what's you uh, you're heavily invested, this that, and the other. Well, let us see some of that heavy investment that you're that seed that you're planting in their ear and letting them and 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 showing them how true reality TV works. Because I have not seen it. If it had not been for Melody and her mom, Miss Van and Martell, that's giving us the real and the raw. Melody and Martell carry that show. Melody gave her all. I felt so bad for Melody having to go through all of that. And you got all these cast members reaping the benefits off of her. Her pain, her suffering, her heartaches. Her prayer closets. And all you can do is tell them is to talk about black. And you don't want to hear nothing else about Marceau cheating? Don't nobody give a damn about Marceau cheating. Because Letitia don't give a damn about Marceau cheating. She know exactly who she married. We tired of hearing it just like y'all tired of hearing it. Letitia is the one that keep bringing it up. Which means that she feels as though there's still something there. Because she's crying every other episode. About what somebody said. Somebody standing too close. Somebody looking at him. So if Letitia put it to bed. I guarantee you everybody else will put it to bed. Because me. As a viewer. Don't care. Don't give a. Don't give a hoot. Who Martell is rolling around in the sheets with. And his wife already now. Don't nobody care. But she keep alluding to Melody putting it out there because if it is something that come about, she can say, oh no, that's just Melody do doing her dirty work again. But I guarantee you, the viewers don't care one way or another what Marceau is doing. We don't really care what they're doing at all because how many seasons have y'all been on? Five going into six? Four, five going into six? We don't know because y'all broke it up. And that's what I'm saying. Chaos. We don't know if you're on if you're going into season six or going into season five. We don't know. Too much foolery. But what we do know is that if you can critique a whole nother network for their franchise, not one or two episodes, but every season, every episode, every scene, every cast, then you see it on your own reality shows as well. Like you say, you're the king of reality. So how can you nitpick over here but can't point it out on your own and if you want the real over there why wouldn't you accept nothing but the real on your own because in your words you know what the viewers want to see reality tv that's what we're tuned in to see reality tv but you haven't gave us reality TV. 
you've gave us Melody, Cherie, and Martel Hope, Reality TV. The other cast members, you've given us straight foolery, clownish, lying, deceitful, messiness, bullying, anything else that but you knew this you know this because you already because you can point it out in a hot second over at the bravo network you say you call it like you see it well i wish you call it like you see it on love and marriage huntsville bring that whatever you are attached to or um whatever you stand for on bravo network can you please apply it to your own reality shows because the only thing is given to me is that you're interviewing for Bravo because that's what you're promoting. You're not promoting any of your cast. You may say something to them or like a pick online or something like that. But no, you stand for the Bravo Network. And I understand you used to be a part of it. But at the same time, you need, if you can come that hard for the Bravo Network, you should come 10 times harder for the Oprah Winfrey Network because this got your name on it. Executive producer, Carlos King. Can you please give us some real reality TV? That's all we asking. And I'm just talking out loud. Thank you for listening.